everybody welcome back to my channel I am so glad you could be here today um, today is Sunday November 12th I am actually filming my videos for the week today because I have grandkids coming to stay with me this week and so I have three of our littles coming up and there is no way I will be able to get videos out and I don't want to miss a week so I'm gonna get um, a couple videos done today and um, have them ready for you this week I am, um, I'm back to my old camera. I'm hoping I need to do something about the camera situation here at some point. Um, and I'm hoping that this does the trick for today. Uh, we will see. Um, and this one shouldn't be too, um, I know my last video was a bit PC just because the, the nature of what I was doing, but also because I had camera issues, um, which was my phone at that time. So, um, hopefully we will get through this video without any uh, interruptions today. Um, <clears throat> so today I am back down in our basement and I have my Carter here, which I will be flipping over to that. I have my Spinolution Monarch down here and um, I kind of like the light down here a lot better than um, what I have upstairs. <clears throat> So I thought I'd do it down here, plus all of my mohair is down here, um, which is what we're going to talk about today. So today I'm hopping on to do some carding and some spinning of mohair. Um, and I, um, I am always hesitant, uh, which I don't know why I do this, but um, so I've been spinning and doing fiber arts for 20 years now. And... Um, I, there are people out there that know a whole lot more than I do. Um, I was not raised on a farm and kind of jumped into this with both my feet and at times <laughs> have not known what I was doing with some things. Um, and so I never feel overly confident because I'm still learning. I, I still learn all the time with spinning. And I think, and of course, here comes Willow. Um, I think... I can confidently say this though, um, and I think even spinners who have spun for many, many, many years, and there's lots of them out there that have spun for years, longer than I have, longer than my 20 years, um, I feel like fiber arts have shifted, um, and I think it's been with the age of, of the internet and with YouTube and with all the sharing that can be done. Um, I feel like there has been a shift in in what used to be the rules of fiber arts. Um, I am a self-taught spinner. Um, I had one drop spindle class and picked up spinning on a wheel by myself. Um, no YouTube, no nothing. And it was just something that came very easily for me. Um, and now, have I always done it right? No. Um, am I a technical person? So I learn all about ratios and um, different things like that. No, I've had to learn those things over the years to make good yarn, but I am not a technical spinner. Um, I don't, I don't enjoy the ratio part. I just want to sit down and spin. Um, and so, but I think I can say this and people would agree with me. Fiber arts and yarn spinning has changed so much over the, the last, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years. Um, what used to be just spinning for a two-ply yarn or a three-ply yarn or a four-ply yarn has morphed into spinning singles, spinning art yarn, spinning, um, spinning stuff into our yarn. Um, I... I think that's all morphed so much to where not that there aren't any rules anymore because you always want to have a great yarn that is um, put together well and strong, but there's there's so much stuff you can do with it. Um, and so I was hesitant to make this video because I have actually, I don't believe I've ever spun mohair before. Um, maybe I may have bought some um, blended stuff that had mohair in it, but I have never spun 100% mohair, and I almost didn't make today's video until I did a little bit more research, because I never want to come on here and say something that is totally off the wall. But the more I thought about it, um, I thought, you know what, I don't know 
like I just enjoy spinning. I enjoy the creative side of it. I enjoy making my own yarn. Um, it is never cheaper to make your own yarn. Everything about this this craft is is expensive, but there's something about making your own yarn. Um, now everyone has their opinion about what yarn is, I think, and there's going to be people that will never make art yarn because they just they're not drawn to it. There are people who will never card together wacky colors and make a skinny yarn out of that because they're not drawn to it. And and that's okay because there are people like me who go, oh, what can I do with this? And, and how far can I push the limits of it? Um, and so I, <clears throat> I'm going into this with never have spun 100% mohair. Or again, this is my first time processing it also. Um, now that we have goats, I'm trying to learn more about it. I do have this book, and I apologize. I think I'm coming down with a cold, um, so I'm a little bit raspy today. I've got a bit of a cough, but hopefully we'll get through this without any um, coughing fits. So um, I do love this book. I'll put the link down below. I got mine from Amazon, of course. Um, and this is the Fleece and Fiber source book. It has every fiber you can possibly imagine. There is a section in here with goats and um, gives you basic characteristics, types, things like that. But what I, I'm not gonna read through this or go through this, but I just wanted to show you a couple of the pictures um, pages because when I kind of glanced at this book today, I realized like they have, I don't know, six, seven, eight different options of how to spin mohair. So I'm like, okay, there's no one way to do it. I don't think there's no one way to do anything. Um, and so they have some great photographs there of different plies and different um, processing. Um, so uh, some of these are locks opened with dog combs. That's the description. Um, some of them are top pulled from mini combs. Some of them are... Um, this one says two ply spun directly from peasant combs. I don't know what a peasant comb is, so I'll have to look that up, I guess. Um, there's singles here picked from the locks, so you'd just be taking the locks just like this and doing a single ply. Um, there's two ply spun from peasant combs again. Um, I guess I have to look up what those are. I do not know. <laughs> um, there are two ply flicked locks. This is the other pages that they have of all the different mohair you can make. Um, when I think of mo mohair, I often think of really finely spun and all the uh, knitters or crocheters, people who make garments, you always see them put a strand of mohair with their yarn. That's what I think of. But as I look at this section in my book, I realize, no, it's a lot of different, different things. Um, there's combed spun two ply there's mini comb spun two ply, ply. Um, there is picked locks two ply spun and it all has a different look which is what I love um, so today I am gonna do <clears throat> a little bit of carding and spinning straight from the locks and spinning from the carded stuff I was gonna mix it <coughs> Excuse me. I was going to mix it with some Angora, but I think I'll save that for a different video. I think this is going to be enough where you'll get the feel um, for what you can do with it. Um, again, I have Hyacinth locks back here, um, and I have washed them. They're lovely. They smell like Dawn. Actually, they don't. Yeah, a little bit of Dawn, but they don't. They don't smell like what they did. They had a had, definitely had a goat smell. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to switch you over to my wheel, and I'm just going to spin straight from the locks to to start out, and then we'll card some and see what it looks like. So hold on, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my Spinolution Monarch with my eight ounce bobbin on here. Um, I don't have any empty bobbins right now. Surprise, surprise. Um, so I'm just going to use this one. And I have a handful of locks. And I just kind of um, picked through them. 
there is still a few pieces of hay every now and then and that's typical um, I never get mad at that even when I purchase fiber from farms it just kind of makes you realize where it came from um, you know that is the legit thing it's not acrylic processed in a factory somewhere this is the real deal and so I have just sort of pre-drafted these a little bit um, <clears throat> and I'm going to get my wheels started uh, let's see I'm gonna pull off I had tied something onto that I'm gonna pull that off oops and I already twisted it up and around while I was fiddling around that's why I love these monarch or spinolution wheels with the pop on um, oh your orifice your hook here it just pops on and off just like that holds the bobbin right in place and you can hear it snap that's the magnet that's all it is to change it out it's so nice so we will oh I did it again We'll get this started and there we go. So again, this is just locks, um, more of an art type yarn. You would maybe leave some of these locks hanging just like this. Hopefully you can see it. I know the color isn't great. Um, the fiber is a bit light in some spots. <clears throat> but that's the beauty of mohair, I think, is that people just love the, um, you know, it's like Angora. You get that beautiful, beautiful halo um, coming off from the fibers. Yeah, this spins lovely. If you were going to spin um, locks, you would find a blunt end, uh, or an, a cut end, I should say, and you, let's see if I can get it to catch. I kind of took it out from being caught already. You would kind of let that twist in there, and then you'd let it go just like that, and that creates some locks. And I know some people do some really beautiful yarns with um, the locks left pretty natural. Yeah, this is a dream to spin. I am really loving. Um, I think I mentioned this, or, or I'm almost positive I mentioned this in the last video. Um, when I was washing this, I was surprised at how um, easily... Even with still having a little bit of dirt and stuff in it, it just cleaned so easily. Uh, things just kind of fell out of it. Um, when I rinsed it and, you know, the water had some of the vegetable matter and stuff in it, um, it was just so easy to kind of rinse it out and it was just gone. So, and according to, you know, like that book I just showed you, um, it's not all single ply mohair. It's not all fine spun mohair. It looks like there are many, many, many different ways that you can do this. Which I'm really excited to try all the different ways. Um, they did talk about carters and dog comer, uh, dog brushes, um, which is actually what I started my spinning journey on. So that's, that is... Let me see if I can move you up just a little bit. That is, and I know it's hard to see on this brown, but it's really got a beautiful luster to it. Um, if we were gonna hand card this, I would just take my hand carders, my tried and true, which I probably need to replace at some point. They are getting, a little bit <clears throat> rough around the edges but they still do the job for me so you would just flick these out just the same way I do Angora essentially load up the carter and let's see. 
and then run it. I've been working on Angora. I have a ton of Angora card, <clears throat> which is probably, like I said, going to be another video because I've got a lot to do with Angora, so I'll probably blend some of this. But then you just kind of run it through, and you wouldn't even have to. This just kind of aligns the fibers. It's just so beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see um, the sheen, the luster coming off from this fiber. It is so beautiful. I'm curious to see once I get the rest of the goats done if they all have. I'll have to take a picture outside. I think the sunlight will catch it better than in here. Um, I'll be curious to see because Hyacinth did win Grand Champion for her um, yearling fleece. I'll be curious to see what the other um, babies look like because they are younger. Um, but yeah. So, let me get some of this off. So that's what it looks like when it's hand carded. And typically you'd make roll eggs out of this just for time's sake. I am just kind of pulling it off into a handful here. And then this is going to look totally different. Let me move this. This is going to look totally different compared to what I just spun um, just because of how we carded it. So this is going to be, I could spin it really thin. You still see some of the, the halo <clears throat> coming out. I don't think it's called halo on mohair. I will have to look that one up. Angora rabbits have the halo. This just has a beautiful um, look to it. This is lovely. And you can get, these are pretty good staple lengths, so I can get fairly thin. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. It's pretty easy to spin really thin. And it's easy enough if there is a uh, hay or anything in there. I'm just picking it out as I go along. There's been a couple pieces here and there. You just pull it right out and you're good to go. Yeah, this is beautiful. I don't want to waste too much of it. <laughs> so, let's see. You can kind of tell this is just spun from the locks and you can see a lot of the curls and stuff. This is the carded stuff. And... Again, I will take a picture and pop it in the video um, to show you the sheen. So let me pause this, readjust, and we'll do some drum carding, and I'll show you how that goes. Okay, guys, I've got my drum carder set up here, and I did not get it locked down because this table is actually too thick for my... <coughs> for it to lock down so I am just going to hold it just to give you an idea of what this looks like so here I I don't know after spinning it from the locks I think for me I think a lot of this I am going to just um, I think I'm going to spin a lot of this right from the locks. I don't even know if I would take time to card it, um, or not. I guess I'll have to think about that. And I'm going to pull this apart. And again, it's just a matter of fluffing out the um, the locks, putting, doing some, a little bit of, not pre-drafting, but opening the locks up. And just setting them down here. Yeah. 
and yeah yeah I think um, I guess it depends on how this ends up spinning but I think you have lots of options with this fiber that's what I love um, is that there seems to be so many different things that you can do with it I haven't even got this loaded, but let me take this. And it's probably not going to come off. I should have loaded it a little bit more, but for the purpose of this video, we are just going to do a little bit. And typically I put mine um, through the drum carter, depending on the fiber and what I'm doing with it. I usually run it through a couple times, so yeah, this is just gorgeous. And Hyacinth does have some light and dark to her um, fiber, so that's just run through just once. And it, I did not fill the um, drum at all, so this would look a lot nicer if I did. So... Let me pop you back up here. That's it. Um, I am going to do uh, probably another video. I have a video all set for Friday that I want to do. Um, it's going to be something kind of fun. Hopefully it works out. I'm not sure. It's a brand new thing that I've just kind of become aware of, and I'm going to try it with my Angora. Um, so that will be Friday's video, but I think... Um, Next week sometime, one of the videos will be me sp spinning some more mohair and then doing some mohair angora fiber carded together, blended, and then spun. So you'll get to see more of this lovely stuff. I will take a picture, pop it in the video for you, um, just so you can kind of see the the luster of this this gorgeous, gorgeous fiber. I'm a huge fan. I'm so excited. Um, it makes me want to go get more goats. I don't think my husband would like that, but <laughs> it sure makes me want to have some more. I'm super excited to get into um, my two little ones. They have the really dark uh, charcoal silver hair um, fiber, and so I'm super excited. I may go get some of a bag of that and start working through that. Um, they were just born in June, so they didn't have a ton of fiber this year, um, but it is very beautiful. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts on, um, do you, are you kind of a rule follower when it comes to yarn making or do you enjoy kind of trying different things and um, kind of breaking the rules sometimes? Um, and again, I don't think, I think we've morphed into a place where there are less rules with yarn which is a great place to be for artists and things. Um, but tell me, which which one are you? Are you a rule follower or rule breaker when it comes to making yarn? I would love to know. Again, if you have any questions or comments, you can always put them down below. I'll be glad to answer any questions that I can. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I am trying to grow it, and all of the subscribes and likes definitely help me do that. Um, and like this uh, video if you enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Stay tuned, and I'll see you later this week. Bye.